Chapter One: The Change. I don't own HP cause I'm not rich. No flames. Please tell me if you think Draco is a bit out of character cause my sister thought he was acting a bit weird. What the hell do you think you're doing, Potter? Yelled Snape. I'm making a potion, you greasy bastard. I yelled back. How dare you call me that, you inferior student? Complained Snape. That's two points from Gryffindor. No, sir, please, I begged. Keep going and it'll be all three points, threatened Snape. Gryffindor had been down to three points, and now we only had one left. Draco Malfoy smirked at me. He was the hottest guy in school, and all the girls wanted him. But I was a boy and not gay, so we couldn't be together. Have you finished your acorn potions? asked Snape angrily. If they're done right, pouring them over random objects should turn them into acorns. If they're done wrong, they'll cause you to pass out and then permanently change gender forever. I think you should test Potter's, said Draco, his grey eyes glinting. An excellent idea, Draco, said Snape buoyantly. Potter, drink your potion. But I thought we were supposed to drink it now or I'll take one point from Gryffindor, emitted Snape loudly. I drowned a cup of the potion and prominently fell unconscious. I woke up in the infirmary with all my friends gathered around me. Harry, you're all right, Ginny explained. Yeah, but I feel different, I said. Well, you've... Changed, said Hermione in a small voice. What do you mean, I asked. Ginny passed me a hand mirror and I looked into it. A perfectly tanned picture of femininity beauty stared back at me. I was thin enough to be anorexic with D-cups and curves in all the right places. My black hair was long and silky like a silk and it went down to my feet. I was wearing lip gloss, blush, and mascara from Maybelline. Also, my scar was gone and I didn't need glasses anymore. Oh my god, I'm a girl, I screamed. And what's wrong with being a girl? asked Hermione, putting her hands on her hips. Uh, nothing, I said quickly. It's just uh, I'm used to being a boy. At that moment, Dumbledore rode into the hospital wing on a unicycle, wearing an old-fashioned bathing suit. Good afternoon, Harry, he said as he alighted. I am sure you, as I'm sure you've noticed, you are female now. No biggie, I said. You could change me back, of course. Um, about that, said Dumbledore awkwardly. You can't, I shouted. But you're the greatest wizard in the world. Well, I'm sorry, my powers aren't infinite, Dumbledore shot back. You're the one who's so upset about being a girl. Are you going to be sexist like Ron? No, I decided. How can I be a girl? I don't even know how to braid hair or fry spaghetti. Hermione will teach you everything you need to know, said Dumbledore cheerfully. Okay, first of all, you need to read lots of books and be really smart, said Hermione. How to be a normal girl, corrected Dumbledore, rolling his eyes. Oh, well, in that case, we better take you shopping in Hogsmeade, said Hermione eagerly. Unlike me, you'll need lots of girly clothes. Okay, but how will you explain this to the rest of the school, I asked, wondering what Draco would think. I'll tell everyone that Harry Potter has left the school and that you're a new student, said Dumbledore. No one had better suspect that I'm Harry, I said. Don't worry, says a Dumbledore. I'm the bestest wizard in the world. I'll come up with a watertight story no one will see through. <clears throat> I am sorry to inform you all that Harry Potter has left the school, Dumbledore told everyone in the Great Hall the next morning. You see, his parents died... Which you all know, of course, but, uh, Harry's invitation to their funeral got lost in the mail, so he just left now and he won't come back for some reason. Anyway, on a completely unrelated note, I'd like to introduce you to Harriet Potter to our school. Harriet is Potter is a new student and not, I repeat, not Harry Potter permanently turned into a girl by a potions accident yesterday, which had multiple witnesses. She just transferred here from a school somewhere and, uh, and uh, did I mention that she's not Harry Potter? I did? Oh good, cause she's not. You got that, right? Completely, totally different person from Harry Potter who's away because of whatever the story I told you about him was. Got that? Good. Here's Harriet Potter now! I walked confidently into the Great Hall. I was wearing a cream colored blouse with bright purple polka dots, a fleece jacket with pink and red horizontal stripes and Oliver Green Mini. I was wearing lavender flip flops with lime green tube socks over my mustard yellow tights. I also had on a bra and panties, but they were under the rest of my clothes, so you couldn't see them. I had dyed my hair blue and put it in buns like Princess Leia from Star Wars. All the boys started lusting after me, while most of the girls looked incredibly jealous. Hello, I said to everyone. I'm not Harry Potter. Did you think it was funny? Please tell me. <laughs> Actually, yes, I did think that was funny. It was still terrible, but <laughs> it was funny. Anyway, next chapter... Chapter 2. Guess who? Glad everyone thought the story was so funny. Here's Chapter 2. Now come up here and be sorted, said Professor McGonagall to me. I came up and put on the sorting hat. 
Hey, you're Harry Potter, the sword hat said in my ear. I already sorted you. Yeah, but I'm pretending I'm a new student, I whispered so no one else could hear. But play along. That's sneaky, said the hat. And being sneaky is evil, so better be... Slytherin! No, I screamed as the Slytherin table cheered. Oh, well, at least I was in the same house as Draco now. I walked over to the Slytherin table. Hey, you're a girl, said Ron as I sat down. Will you iron my shirts? Shut up, Ron, yelled Ginny. You're a sexist. We hadn't told Ron that I was Harry Potter because if he knew the Chosen One was a girl, he'd give up on the good side and join the Death Eaters. Hey, want to be my BFF? asked Pansy, who was one of the most popular girls in Hogwarts. She was a huge slut and she was wearing off-brand slutty clothes. No, you're a slut, I yelled. Fine, you'll never be popular now, she declared. We then set off for our first class, which was Herbology. Hey, how come I got such large breasts despite being really skinny, I asked Hermione. That doesn't seem natural. I guess it's because the potion turned you into the ideal feminine form, said Hermione. Okay, I guess that makes sense, I said as he walked into the greenhouse. I'm back, said Gilderoy Lockhart. Ron groaned. Oh, great, now all the stupid girls will act lovesick, he said, because he was sexist. I used to think Gilderoy was annoying, but now that I was a girl, I could see how hot he was and that his arrogance was just confidence. And you could totally see his chilled abs through the hot pink flowing robes. He looked exactly like Robert Patterson! I've replaced Professor Sprout, Gilderoy explained. She died in a bungee jumping accident today. Today we'll learn about beauty flowers. Eating beauty flowers will make you irresistible to the opposite sex. Not that I've eaten any, of course. We'll be planting them in pairs. Potter, you will go with Malfoy. Draco and I started planting beauty flowers together. Wow, you look totally hot, said Draco. In fact, you look exactly like Meg Ryan. Thanks, I said, blushing. Want to go on a date in Hogsmeade, asked Draco happily. Okay, I replied. Next chapter. Chapter 3. The date is Hogsmeade. Sorry I took so long to update. Here's more of the story. The views of Ron are not shared by me. I walked into the three broomsticks in Hogsmeade to date Draco. I was wearing an orange and green sports bra so you could see my belly ring, a hot pink poodle skirt with a blue-green poodle on it, and bright orange hiking boots. My gray hair had magenta highlights and was braided into three braids. I was wearing blush with foundation over it. I was also wearing frilly panties, but you couldn't see them. When they saw me, the boys practically began drooling. I quite liked being a girl now. Wow, you look hot, said Draco, who was wearing nothing but an electric purple speedo to show off his amazing body. Yeah, so do you, I said, trying not to get too entranced by Draco's incredibly tan chest. Hey, you two lovebirds want a booth? asked Madame Rosemara cheerfully. Yeah, okay, me and Draco said in unison. We sat down on a booth with an incredible view of Hogwarts out the window. So how long have you been at Hogwarts, Harriet? asked Draco. Call me Crystal, I decided. Harriet is such an ugly name. Okay, my name's Draco, said Draco. Yeah, I know, I replied. Uh-oh, here comes trouble, said Madame Rosemara, as Ron walked into the pub wearing a cowboy hat with Pansy on his arm. Those two troublemakers are going to cost me my business, she sighed under her breath. Get us a table for two, you slags, Ron said offensively to Madame Rosemara. Pansy didn't mind dating someone as sexy as Ron because she was a slut. No, you're not welcome here anymore, Madame Rosemara told him. Get out or there will be trouble. You want trouble? You've got it, said Ron, pulling his wand out of a holster on his belt. He started shooting everyone with his wand, starting a bar fight. Now that's quite enough, said Draco, trying to wrestle Ron's wand out of his hand. You're ruining the bar. Hey, that's quite a pretty girl you got there, said Ron, looking lackvaciously at me. You think she might want to jump in bed with me and Pansy? No, I don't want that, I yelled in a terrified voice. No means yes, laughed Ron, throwing Draco aside. No, I screamed as Ron came forward to rape me. Stop right there, sucker, yelled Gilderoy, standing in the entrance of the wrecked bar, looking perfectly immaculate in his fancy clothes. He was pointing his wand at Ron. The fighting had stopped. You can't prove I wouldn't have raped her, Ron said superiorly. Maybe, said Gilderoy, but you did wreck the bar. I give you detention, cleaning it up. Madame Rosemary can clean it up herself, laughed Ron. She's a woman, and that's what women do. That's ten points from Gryffindor for being sexist, shouted Gilderoy. No, Snape took our last point today, laughed Ron. We have no points left for you to take. Come on, let's get out of here, Pansy. He and Pansy left the pub together. I'll see to it that he won't come around here again, Gilderoy told Madame Rosemara. He won't cause you trouble anymore. Thank you, said Madame Rosemara, relieved. That was so scary, I said, collapsing in Draco's arms. Don't worry, I will protect you always, said Draco. We kissed happily.
Next. Chapter 4. We have to stop Ron. I have a new rule. Everyone who reads this story must leave 12 reviews for each chapter. I woke up excitedly the next day. I put on my red lingerie, bright yellow t-shirt, pink tights, purple cardian sweater, orange short shorts, and orange high heels. I dyed my hair lilac and styled it into a beehive with magic. I also put on green eyeshadow to bring out the color of my eyes. I went down to the Great Hall. I didn't have any classes because it was Sunday. Hey, Draco, I said to Draco. Wow, you look extra hot today, he told me. Thanks, I said, blushing. He moved towards me. You're the only one for me, Crystal, he said in a romantic voice. I'll never love another girl more than you. I stared romantically into his eyes. My heart sped up as we came together to kiss again. Hey, look at me, shouted Pansy in a slutty voice, ruining the moment. She was trying to get Draco's attention by wearing slutty clothes. Let's go somewhere without sluts, I suggested. Okay, let's go to the Transfiguration Courtyard, said Draco. We went there. We sat down on a bench, and we were about to kiss when Ginny ran in on her Quidditch outfit. Hey, Ginny, said Draco. I had told him Gryffindors were nice. Hey, said Ginny, we have a problem with you. Her I mean, with Harry gone, Ron is captain of the Quidditch team. He's kicked me off because he only allowed girls to join if they're hot and not related to him. Katie got thrown off too when she stood up to him for me. She he's replaced with those sluts Pravati and Lavender, and he's made Neville our new seeker. You'll lose every time with them, I shouted. How could he do that? We've got to stop him. Hey, you're in Slytherin, remember? Draco told me. It's good for us Sly Gryffindor has a bad team. Yeah, but Ginny's our friend and we have to help her, I pointed out. Okay, fine, said Draco. We went to Professor McGonagall. She was riding on a magical exercise bike to cure her of her menopause. Where do you come up with this shit? Hello, she said. We have to see Professor Dumbledore immediately, we all said at once. I'm afraid Professor Dumbledore is not here, McGonagall told us. As it so happens, he is at the Gay Pride Parade in Hogsmeade. But Ron's taken over the Quidge team and he's being sexist, shouted Ginny. Well, I'm afraid he's the captain and can do whatever he wants, said McGonagall sadly. The former captain, Harry Potter, decided Ron would take over if something happened to him. I sighed guiltily. I'd done that before I became a girl and realized how sexist Ron was. Can't we do anything? I begged. I'm afraid not. McGonagall said as a lone tear rolled down her cheek. She knew Gryffindor stood no chance of winning the Quidditch Cup now. We all walked away sadly. Still not sure why Malfoy cares, but okay. Next! Chapter 5. Oh no! Later that day, I went to Gilderoy for help. Well, I suppose you could get Ron thrown off the team, he said. That way he wouldn't be captain anymore. How could I do that, I asked desperately. Well, flirting is strictly forbidden in the Quidge tent for some reason, Gilderoy told me. If you flirt with Ron in there, he won't be able to resist flirting back. And then we got him. But Ron is sexist, I shouted. He might try to rape me. I'll come along to protect you, Gilderoy said fatherly. We went to the tent and saw Ron talking to the team. This is the new uniform for female Gryffindor players, said Ron, as he pointed to Pavati and Lavender, who were wearing nothing but scarlet sea strings with tiny gold pansies. At first, I thought of making them go topless, but that wouldn't leave anything to the imagination. I like him, said Pavati, swaying her hips slutly. They make me feel so sexy. Yeah, let's go find some boys and gawk at our practically nude bodies, said Lavender, happily as they left with the rest of the team. We also have practice tomorrow, yelled Ron after them. I walked into the room seductively, sexily spinning my sweater in hands. Well, hello, he said in a sexist voice. Are you going to let me touch your crystal, Crystal Potter? Maybe, I said, throwing the sweater aside and standing before him with a sexy pose. I hoped Gilderoy would run in and stop Ron soon, because flirting with that disgusting red-headed creature made me feel sick to my stomach. Trying to resist the urge to throw up, I smiled flirtily at him. Take off your clothes, Ron demanded. Girls shouldn't be allowed to wear clothes if they look hot. They should also make 75 cents for every dollar men make and not have the right to choose. Tell me more, I said, trying not to let Ron's ugly, sexist face make me gag. I decided to tease Ron some more, pretending to remove my shirt. You bitch! yelled a very sexy voice. Draco ran in, pointing his finger at me. It's not what it looks like, I said, worried Draco might not like me now. Yeah, right, he yelled at me. You're just as big a slut as Pansy. I don't love you anymore. He ran away crying. I stood there sadly as Gilderoy, Ginny, and Hermione walked in. You were flirting in the Quidditch tent, said Ginny, pointing at Ron. That means you're not captain anymore. Ron glared at us angrily. You may have won this round, Crystal Potter, he declared loudly, but I'll get my revenge. You just wait and see, you stupid girls. And then he ran away laughing like a maniac. Well, you got rid of Ron for us, said Ginny happily. 
Yeah, but now Draco hates me, I said happily. Don't worry, said Hermione comfortingly. We'll hope you get him back. I hope so, I said. Did you like it? I'm thinking of having Sirius Black come back from the dead to de teach defense against the dark arts. Anyone else like this idea? You're giving him the death sentence again by doing that. <sighs> but if anyone else knows why Ron is given this treatment by, well, this is actually a pretty common thing in the fandom for some reason that I do not get in any way, shape, or form. See you next week, where Dumbledore will do something even sillier than what he did back in Chapter 1. Trust me on that.